Hey everyone, with all the talk of inflation in the news, I thought it would be prudent to do a quick video on a common measure of inflation, namely the Consumer Price Index or CPI. But first, what is inflation? Inflation is where the general prices of goods and services increase. Deflation, on the other hand, is when they decrease. For instance, due to inflation, the price of a loaf of bread in the UK in 1975 was 16p. In 2021, it is around 106p. As prices rise, this means that the currency's purchasing power decreases. Using the same example, 106p nowadays could buy you six and a half loaves of bread back in 1975, whereas now it can only get you one. So why does this happen? Well, it happens because the price of raw materials, production and salaries to make and sell that loaf of bread rise over time. Inflation can also happen as the demand for certain goods rise. More demand than supply means an increase in the price of supply. Now people, politicians, economics need a way to quantify and measure this rate of inflation and as such have developed ways to do this. So let's talk about CPI, one of the common measures. CPI is a theoretical basket of everyday goods, each with an average price tag. Now there are hundreds of everyday goods and services that are tracked and they are split into eight categories, namely housing, clothing, transport, food and drink, medical care, recreation, education and other. Examples within these categories might include the price of a carton of milk, a loaf of bread, rent, a pair of shoes, electricity and so on. These also depend what country you are from. The basket of goods in the UK will be different from the basket of goods in the US. And this basket is also dependent on the times of which we live. For example, in 2020, hand sanitizer was added to this list. CPI is always measured against a base year. So if the average cost of a basket in 2021 is £5.20, and the average cost of that same basket in 2020 is £5.10, the increase is £5.20 divided by £5.10 times 100, which is 1.019 or simply 1.9% 1, 1 rise. CPI helps determine the purchasing power of a currency and consequently the rate of inflation. The government here in the UK aims to keep inflation at the 2% level. The general view is that if inflation is too high or changes a lot, it's hard for businesses to set the right prices for their products and for people to plan their spending. On the other hand, if it is too low, then people might not spend as much as they expect prices to fall, which stops the economy from growing. Having said that, the reason why everyone is talking about it now is that inflation in the UK is now as high as 5.1%. Now, when we talk in terms of loaves of bread, it's hard to see how a 5% rise in prices is impactful in the everyday. However, it really is, and it's something everyone needs to take seriously. Let's take a broad example. Say, in 2021, you receive a net salary of £30,000 a year and your cost of living, bills, rent, car, etc. comes to around £20,000 a year. So you manage to put £10,000 away in savings. On a 5% inflation rate, your cost of living in one year's time in 2022 will essentially be £21,000. Now, if your salary doesn't go up accordingly to match inflation, then now you're only saving £9,000 a year. And this goes on and on. So why is inflation so high at the moment? Well, there are a number of reasons, but it's mostly due to the global pandemic, energy price increases, and the varying supp supply chain disruption leading to less supply than demand as a whole, which puts upward pressure on the prices. So what has the government done? Well, in order to try and lessen the effects of inflation, two days ago, the Bank of England decided to raise interest rates to 0.25% from its all-time low of 0.1%. So what does this do? Generally, interest rates and inflation rates have an inverse relationship. If interest rates are low, more people can borrow money to spend, the economy grows and inflation increases. If interest rates are high, people tend to save more because returns from savings are greater. This means they don't spend as much. The economy slows and inflation decreases. So a higher interest rate basically is trying to decrease the demand of the demand supply relationship, which we spoke about before. I hope that makes sense. It is important to note that CPI is not the only measure of inflation. In the UK, we also have an adjustment to CPI known as CPIH, which includes home occupiers' housing costs. This means the theoretical basket includes all the costs associated with owning, maintaining and living in one's own home. There is also an older measure of inflation called the retail price index, as, as well as the wholesale price index, but I will perhaps go into those in other videos. I hope this gives you a starting overview of CPI, inflation and interest rates. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel and comment below if you have any thoughts. Take care everyone, I'll see you all soon.